In this short video, what I'll do is I'll try and explore how the delta of a call option, it varies with the time to maturity of this option. The way we'll try and reason it out is first we'll try and do it mathematically then we'll try and do it more intuitively. Whatever intuition we draw out of this analysis of how the delta of a call varies with its time to maturity, we will then quickly apply it to the case of the delta of a put option. And then in the end, based on all the results that we have, let's say, unearthed by that point in time, we will draw a very bonus kind of a feature. That feature or that rule of thumb will come out without any extra hard work, okay? So let's do this. Let's start off on a more mathematical note. Let's write down what the delta of a call option is, okay, before we find its sensitivity to the time to maturity. Let's call time to maturity as t, okay. So delta of a call option, what is it? It's simply nd1, where n denotes n denotes the CDF of the standard normal distribution. It's the area to the left of any given value that you specify. D1, let's write it down. D1, the formula is, it's the log of S over K plus R plus sigma square by 2T, the whole thing divided by sigma root T. Now here, before I move ahead, I think it'll help us if I make a very simple assumption. And that simple assumption won't affect the nature of the results that we are after. And that assumption is, let's assume that the interest rates are actually very close to zero. So if that happens, let's write down the formula for D1. I'll separate the two terms out. It will be ln S over K, that divided by sigma root T plus it will be sigma root t over 2. These are my two terms. Now let's do this. Let's try and let's say bump the t up. So if I bump the t up, what effect will it have? The first and foremost effect that it will ha have is on the second term, the second term goes up, okay, because root of t goes up and t goes up and this root of t is sitting in the numerator. What happens to the, set to the first term? The first term has a square root of t, but this square root of t sits in the denominator. Before I write down the impact of this increase on the first term, I have to draw out two cases. The first term's impact depends on whether the numerator is positive or negative. So let's draw out these two cases. In case one, let's assume that ln s over k is positive. When would that be the case? This would be the case when s is greater than k and this would be the case for an in the money option. Let there be a case 2. Case 2 is a case when the ln of s over k is actually negative. When would that happen? This happens when s is less than k. Okay. Now, I have drawn out these two cases. These decide the sign of the first term. Well, the denominator is always positive. The numerator can be positive or negative. Now let's write down the sensitivity of the first term to changes in t. So if t goes up, then the first term, because the numerator is positive and the denominator has increased, the first term would tend to decrease. Okay. So therefore, we are talking about, you know, two countering effects. The first term is going down when t goes up and the second term tends to go up when t goes up. Out of these two terms, it's the first term which tends to dominate out of the two. And then we see that as t goes up, we can say that d1, it goes down. As d1 goes down, the area to the left of d1, it tends to go down. And therefore, you can write down this rule of thumb that for in the money options, as the time to maturity goes up, the delta of a call option tends to go down. Okay, that's my rule of thumb from a quick intuitive analysis. Okay. Similarly, if you were to move to case two, the first term in the case two is negative. So therefore, as t increases, the magnitude of this first term tends to decrease. As the magnitude decreases, 
the first term becomes less negative and if it becomes less negative overall speaking d1 increases and as d1 increases nd1 also increases and therefore the delta of this call option which is out of the money call increases okay so what are my rules of thumb at this point in time my rules of thumb are for an in the money option my time to maturity plays a spoil sport when it increases the delta of the call option goes down and this spoil sport i'm saying is with respect to the delta of the option on the other hand when it's an out of the money option an increase in time to maturity is actually beneficial the delta of this call option actually goes up okay now this is as far as the intuition the math could take us now let's put it to action let's try and plot the actual deltas for various time to maturities and for various levels of moneyness and check what is the impact so that delta has been you know plotted here what i have done is i have picked a call option whose strike is 50 dollars and the volatility input is let's say 27 percent and i have plotted the deltas for three options of different time to maturities actually four one of them is very very close to its expiry it's 0 0.0001 it's a limiting case of an option reaching its expiry the next one is a time to maturity of three months time to maturity of six months and time to maturity of one year go back and recall the rule of thumb that we had the rule of thumb was in the money options as the time to maturity increases the delta decreases place yourself at a current spot of 60 try and you know see how the delta varies see the delta is actually as you increase the time to maturity it's increasing in this direction as we move from blue to orange to gray to yellow curve see the delta is going down similarly place yourself at a current spot price of 40 that's a that's a point where you are out the out of the money as the time to maturity increases the delta increases so the the, the plot also confirms what we have just found intuitively okay now let's do this let's try and approach this from a different angle now when you were to write down the formula for the price of a call option it's s times nd1 minus the present value of k times nd2 nd1 and nd2 are two probabilities which enter the formula nd2 carries a special significance nd2 is the probability of exercise of a call option it's the probability that the final stock price probability that the final stock price would come out to be greater than the strike price that's nd2 now let's take an impact study let's do an impact study of how this nd2 gets affected by changes in t because that will give us another route to actually tackle this you know dependence between delta call and the time to maturity now since our initial analysis has pointed that out to us let's consider two cases these cases are the cases of an out of the money option and an in the money option let's do that let's put first down the distribution of the prices not returns and i know that prices their distribution in the black scholes world is a log normal distribution let's plot that distribution of or density of the prices for two different time to maturities or two different horizons i am placing myself at a point where the current spot price is 40 i plot the density of a spot price which is three months hence and I plot the density of a spot price, which is six months hence. The volatility input is the same. I mean the annualized number. Sigma is the same. Now, when you do this plot, you will see that, point out the strike here. The strike of this option was 50. Take a look at the probability number that we mentioned. We talked about a probability of ST greater than K. Okay. This guy, the probability of exercise of the option, plays a very critical role in determining the price or value of this option. Let's treat this probability as the area under the curve to the right of the strike. Take a look at the area under the curve. 
to the right of 50 first under the blue curve and then under the orange curve because we have increased the time to maturity look at how the area moves from virtually being non-zero for the case of the blue curve i'm talking about the area to the right of 50 to being something so this is something right so by moving from a three month option to a six month option everything else remaining the same what you've done is that by extending your time to maturity you have allowed an out of the money option an extra probability kick to actually land up in the money or land up or being exercised i should say in the end okay so therefore for an out of the money option this increase in time to maturity was very beneficial, something that we've already reasoned out. And because of that, the delta or the responsiveness of this out of the money option to changes in underlying stock price, it increases as the time to maturity increases. Okay, so this was about an out of the money option. Now let's take a look at an in the money option. To do that, I'll place myself at a current spot price of 60 and still work with an option, a call option, with a strike price of 50. Now let's do this. Again, try and look at the areas, let's say to the right and to the left of 50. So to the right of 50, you have most of the area, or a very high probability, I should say, when you take a look at the blue curve. This option, if the current stock price is 60 and the strike is 50, is comfortably in the money okay now if the time to maturity is three months there is a very very significant chance that this option will pay off it will be exercised and if you now extend the time to maturity to six months and move from the blue curve to the orange curve look at what happens the area to the left of 50 which is the probability that st will be less than k has actually gone up because it was virtually zero for the blue curve and now see it's significant for the orange curve. So what has happened? By extending the maturity of an in the money option, you have increased the probability that this option will stay unexercised. So that is detrimental to the value of the option. So you've increased the chance that this option would not be exercised just because you have increased the time to maturity. And in that extra time to maturity, you've increased the chance that the spot price might go down and the option will not be exercised. Okay. So by looking at the densities also, then we have rationalized that rule of thumb, which we had obtained. And that was for an out of the money option, time to maturity is a very beneficial factor if you increase it delta goes up for an in the money option as far as delta is concerned it plays a spoiled sport okay now let's do this let's take a look at a put option now we have a few rules of thumb with us which will help us you know understand the delta for a put option so take a look at this option delta this is a put option first and foremost it's negative secondly it's in the money and out of the money regions are reversed so this is an in the money region and this is an out of the money region so in the money region when it becomes very much in the money the put delta we know it approaches minus one if it is out of the money it approaches zero okay now take a look at in the money option so in the money i said for the call option the time to maturity plays a spoiled sport right now, in this case, see what is happening. The thing which you have to be clear about is that for a put option, because the delta is negative, you have to draw out your rules of thumb, either in terms of just delta or in terms of magnitude of delta. Okay. First of all, let's take a look at what we observe. As the time to maturity increases, which is in this direction, look at the movement from the blue to the red to the green to the purple curve, you are seeing that the delta is increasing. If I just want to make a statement about delta. So delta is increasing for an in the money put when the time to maturity is increasing. Okay. Now, if you were to remember your rule of thumb in the same way as you did for a call option, try and remember it in terms of the magnitude of the delta, not the delta itself. So if you were to take a look at the magnitude of delta, it's moving from one 
to a smaller value okay so i can phrase my rule of thumb as for a put option whose delta is negative for an in the money put as the time to maturity increases the magnitude of the delta decreases why would that be the case because as we reasoned out using the log normal distributions we can say that it happens because as the time to maturity increases there is now a higher and higher chance that the option will stay unexercised okay and therefore you stand to lose out on the gain that you have at the end of the option or the expiry of the option and therefore the delta of this option goes down or the sensitivity to changes in spot prices goes down a similar rule of thumb you can actually draw out for an out of the money option as we had for the call option and that is as the time to maturity increases which is in this direction you can say that the magnitude of the delta of the put option goes up okay so that was the same rule which we had in place for the call option let's now come to the bonus feature which i had talked about so what we've done over the last few pages is to reason out how the delta of a call or the delta of the put they vary with respect to time to maturity now if somebody were to ask you this question how do the two of them vary with respect to the volatility input then the bonus here is that we don't have to do all the analysis that we've done from scratch the reason is take a look at the formula for delta the sigma and the t they appear together they appear in this form sigma times root of t so whatever reasoning that we've done for the impact of changes in t let's say an increase in t on the delta the same reasoning also applies to increases in sigma as well the reason is that if t were to increase then it goes and affects this combined term sigma times root t and i can make this term go up by making the t be the same and increasing sigma that's an alternative way of making this term go up or down so if this question is posed to you the answer is that when you take a look at the delta of a call option again you have to bifurcate your, your rule of thumb into two cases out of the money and in the money you would say that the delta of a call option if it is an out of the money call option will go up if the volatility of the underlying stock goes up similarly you can say that the delta of a call option which is an in the money call option it will go down when the sigma or the volatility input goes up now for a put option you will say the put option delta if it is an in the money put option it will decrease in magnitude if the sigma goes up and it will increase in magnitude if sigma goes up if it is an out of the money option out of the money put option okay so all i wanted to highlight was in this last section was that all the hard work that we've done for you know finding out the dependence of these two deltas on t they apply to the dependence of these deltas on sigma as well no extra work is required so in this video what have we achieved we've tried to explore how the delta of a simple call or a simple put they vary with respect to time to maturity slash the volatility